What's up everybody, Skyler Dean here, Lifestyle Fat Loss Coach, and today we are diving into what is in my gym bag. Now, this channel here is to help you get in the best shape of your life, to lose fat, to build muscle, and to feel incredible, and to do it sustainably. So number one, if you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. We're putting out new videos every single week here to help get you in the best shape of your life. Second, this is a reminder, this is diving into the gym world. I am a big, big fitness freak. I love lifting weights. Lifting weights is what is going to help your physique look really good as you shed down on body fat, but it is not the answer to losing the body fat. Nutrition is going to be most of the battle. So what I'm going to encourage you to do if you are working on losing fat is to go down below and grab your free copy of our Common Kitchen Upgrades Guide. I know this has got a little bit of a glare on it, but this is going to show you 15 different swaps that you can make in your kitchen. Super, super simple swaps that are going to help you reduce bloating, increase your energy, and lose fat without making any other changes. You don't have to change habits. You don't have to change anything besides what you put in your grocery cart and what you keep in your kitchen. So grab this down below. All right, with that being said, let's explore this gym bag. So first and foremost, the thing that is not pictured in this bag that I always bring with me is my camera, which is filming right now, my tripod, which the camera is on, and my microphone. So I love creating content in the gym. Uh, I don't show too much of that stuff on my YouTube channel, but if you go over to my Instagram and give me a follow, I'm posting stuff in the gym all the time. But that's basically non-negotiable for me. I love filming content. I love sharing it in the gym. And so I'm pretty much always bringing that stuff with me. Next, we have our headphones. So these are Beats by Dre. The reason I choose these headphones, I've done the corded headphone thing and I know it's better for you because you avoid the radiation, you avoid the Bluetooth. I really struggle to just keep my phone in my pocket. I'd rather have my phone on the floor or in my bag somewhere safe away from the weights, uh, preventing any cracked screens. So what I do is I get headphones that are just one piece as opposed to like the AirPods that are two separate devices because then they have to connect Bluetooth wise through your head. Whereas this is connected already to each other. So all it has to do is connect to the phone. So yes, you're still getting Bluetooth. You're still getting some of the radiation. I don't believe it's extremely damaging in small doses. So these are the headphones that I use. Next, we have my weightlifting belt. So this is a belt that's got a chain. It's for adding weight to things like pull-ups and dips. Pretty sure those are the only things I'm really using this for, but it's a great tool to vary the pull-up resistance that you have or the dip resistance, as opposed to if I was gonna do body weight chin-ups, I could get 15 plus reps whereas I can add weight and now I can max out at five, six, seven, eight reps, anywhere in between. So I'm a huge, huge fan of this one. This is a simple keep in the bag. I think while I say that it's worth bringing up, you don't need any of this stuff to be successful in the gym. You don't need any of this stuff to build muscle. As long as you have dumbbells and you have a bench, you have enough variation to be able to create enough resistance on every single muscle to be able to see results. So this is really to accentuate and accelerate the results. This is to enjoy my time at the gym more, to add more variation, but none of this stuff is necessary. However, I will say every single item that I have on here, I will leave a link in the description of this video if you want to check it out. Next, we have our other version of a weight belt. So this is basically for supporting the core, supporting the lower back during movements like deadlifts, heavy bent over rows, or RDLs. I have not been deadlifting as much as I normally have, so I haven't used this as much, but it is a really good resource. I don't believe that you should rely on this. I think that you should be doing all of the exercises I listed on your own uh, without this from time to time, but this is a really good way to practice compressing the core to create stability and ultimately create more safety for your lower back to prevent any injuries. Next, we have our most grips. Now, this is kind of a knockoff of a product that's a little bit more expensive. These were like 15 bucks on Amazon. I love these grips. There is something about them that just allows me to connect better with my back when I'm using them. You can also wrap them around bars or anything so you can create that same wide grip and you can connect in one bar as opposed to doing them individually, but also get the ability to move and turn your hands, right? Whereas like if you were gonna do a straight arm lat pull down or a straight bar lat pull down, your hands would be locked into place with that bar. Whereas these, I could start up with my palms facing forward. As I pull down, I could bring them in. I could start up in, bring them down. I just have a lot more freedom. I really, really love these things. And for cheap price and how small they are, this is a no brainer to keep in my bag. Next, we have my journal. Guys, track your numbers. If you are looking to get stronger, you're looking to build more muscle, tracking your numbers is one of the best things that you can do so that you're not going into the gym and just guessing what weights you're doing. If you log down your numbers, you can easily, easily look back and say, okay, the last time I did this exercise, I hit 30 pounds for 12 reps. So this time I'm gonna go to 35 pounds or I'm gonna go for 30 pounds for 13 reps or 14 reps. Will you be hitting PRs every time you step in the gym? No. If you're a beginner, yeah, you probably will. If you've been lifting for a while, PRs are gonna be fewer and fewer, but it is so, so 
so helpful to track your numbers. If you're not a pen and paper person, there are plenty of apps out there that allow you to log. Um, our clients get a very specific app so they can get their assigned workouts, log their numbers, keep track of their numbers, and so on. But the easiest thing for me is just bring a pen, journal, write it out, and log on my numbers. Next, we have our Versa Grips. I am in love with these. Um, these are definitely a more premium version of your standard grips. So these are meant to help with grip strength so that grip strength isn't the limiting factor of your exercise, right? If you've ever done an exercise where you have to hold on to a dumbbell and as the set goes on, your grip starts giving out and you have to drop the dumbbell, you probably could push more with your muscles but your grip is your limiting factor. So these help you defeat that. Typical straps that are just like a piece of cloth are like $12. This was, I think like 70 to $80 because they just feel so much better. But if you're just a beginner or you're not looking to spend that much, a standard strap is fine. I would suggest with these, you don't really use these for back day because you want your grip to keep up with your back. Whereas if you're constantly using these for back day, your back's going to start to develop. Your arms are going to develop, but your grip strength, your forearm, your grip isn't going to develop as much, which can lead to injury over time or other imbalances and pain. So I mainly use these for number one, heavy bent over rows. So that is a back exercise. Pretty much every other exercise, I'm not using these for back day. And then mostly I use them for leg days. So RDLs, Bulgarian split squats, anything where I don't want my grip grip or my arms to be the limiting factor, right? Because my legs are a lot, lot stronger than my upper body. So I don't want my grip giving out and preventing me from pushing more with my legs. So I absolutely love these things. These are like probably one of my favorite things in the gym bag. Um, but again, you don't need this version. You can just get the typical cloth and use those. All right, next we've got our BFR cuffs. I did an entire review on these, but this is for blood flow restriction training. This is the opportunity to restrict blood flow in the body, whether it's your legs or your arms, so that you can lift lighter weights and still get solid, solid muscle tear, which will help the muscles build back better. So I did the review if you wanna check the full thing out, but these are a lot of fun. I really don't use them that often, but they are cool to occasionally switch things up or if I'm feeling a little fatigued and I don't want to lift super heavy these allow me to still get a good workout while doing them all right next we've got a standard cardio option uh, this is a jump rope so pretty pretty simple love this for warming up love this for working the calves for getting the heart rate up you can do these anywhere and it's pretty simple to carry around so I just include these in my bag next is kind of a sad one it's a old broken resistance band I really should get a new one but I kind of just tied it and I don't really use this that often, but if I need support for like assisted reverse Nordic curl or anything where I want a little resistance, if I want to warm up the shoulders, can kind of do something like this. Um, this is a good option. And again, lightweight, doesn't add much space, super simple to keep. So I just have it in my bag. And then finally, we have our heel slants or slant boards. Um, there are many versions of these online, but these are the ones that I chose. It's harder will. These are for anything where you want to elevate your heels or your toes for specific exercises. So you would place these on the floor, make sure they're symmetrical or in the right position. And then this would be for something like an heels elevated split squat. This could also be heels elevated front squats, back squats, goblet squats. You could elevate your toes by flipping them around for Jefferson curls or RDLs to create more tension and get more of a stretch in the hamstrings calves. Again, not necessary. You could literally just use like a five or 10 pound plate in your gym to elevate your heels or your toes. But this is obviously going to feel a lot better on the foot. And it's just going to be a very consistent slant to be able to keep the feet here instead of kind of just having bends based off where the weight is. So that probably sounds confusing, but it makes sense in my head. And yes, I love these big fan of them. Um, they're definitely the heaviest item and the bulkiest item in my bag, but I do really enjoy the benefits they give. So that's why. I have. And then I just wanted to quickly shout out this bag was custom made by my buddy, Matt, uh, trials and tribulations. If you want to look at his gear, he does merch. She does a lot of awesome stuff. You can check the link in the description for his website as well. But that is my gym bag, guys. Uh, like I said, you can get very, very solid results. In fact, excellent results just with dumbbells and a bench. You don't need all this stuff. But for me, the gym is my playground. I love variation. I love things that make the gym more enjoyable, more fun, more unique. So this is why I keep what I keep in my bag. I've told people before, I probably bring more stuff to the gym every day than I do to the airport when I go on a trip. But I'm just a huge fan of having this as something to use and something to vary my work. Workouts. So with that being said, leave me a comment below. What do you bring to the gym? The other thing I did not add for my gym is my water bottle, which will either be just a standard water bottle or I do bring my one gallon glass jug. I'll actually grab it real quick for you. People do not believe that this is what I bring to the gym, but it is. I fill this up and I will not even bring into my awareness the possibility of breaking this because yeah, this is my thing. I've, I've had it for a long time and it's been totally okay. So thank you so much for watching. As a reminder, we are here to get you in the best shape of your life. So if you are looking for help, check the link in the description. We've got a ton of resources for you, including what I mentioned before, our common kitchen upgrades guide. But if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments and subscribe. And with that being said, of course, as always, make sure to eat smart, move more, sleep deep, 
and be grateful for this moment. I'll see you in the next video.